Hello, been getting a lot of questions about have I done this or have I done that? So two things I'd like to point out to you. First of all, if you use this search channel section here, you'll be able to find a list of all things that I've done very quickly. And also if you click through the playlist, you'll actually see all the areas and subjects that I've covered there. Now the third place you can actually look for information, probably the most concise is this blogger account here, where it says list of my tutorials. And if you click on that, you get a whole page just devoted to every single thing I've done, broken into three sections, literature, poetry, and then language. Um, um, on top of that, if you're actually looking for the notes, which some people have requested, or if you go to the Facebook page over there, you'll find I'm going to add them all on to the notes section there. And while you're on the Facebook page, if you add and share, uh, sorry, like and share, that would be very much appreciated. Um, yeah, on to the video. So we look now at uh, On a Portrait of a Deaf Man, excellent poem, uh, very simple but very sad and uh, there is actually a lot to analyse after the surface. When I say simple here I'm only referring to the language used, it, it flows very easily. Um, so we start off then with structure, um, as always, you've got even stanzas all the way through which kind of show respect, uh, again like he's really thought about it and put this together as, as well as he could uh, because obviously he's remembering so many good things about his dad and all the things that shock him and, and in turn shock us. So as you can see, each stanza is four lines and they're always evenly length. Apart from, I mean, you could say um, the last line where he says, I only see decay. Obviously, that's very short, but that's again for that line to be very, very striking. And that isn't really about his father. That one's obviously his reference, um, his, his arguing with, um, with God. The fact that it's that rhymes all the way through a very simple rhyme, uh, rhyme, uh, rhyme scheme, sorry, A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, etc., etc., as you're going through and basically what we've got there is it gives us the form of something like um, a ballad and a ballad was always a poem that kind of told a story or something for people to actually learn from and um, the story there obviously is a story of his father and while we originally think it's just simply about his father and, and the way his father was it's actually by the time we actually get to this last structure point here it's actually all about um, an argumentation with God or basically him uh, explaining to God why he doesn't believe in him and that's actually a really interesting structural um, way of actually painting uh sorry uh, putting a poem together because we follow all his feelings and we actually see and um we we empathize with a lot of the things that he actually says you know obviously his pain and obviously the things that he dislikes about his father and obviously they shock us and then the person he blames for all that um or the entity should i say that he blames for all that obviously we're then invited to blame too at the end or at least to see his point of view um if he just started with you know um him if he just started with you know, saying to God, you don't believe you, you know, straight away, that would have kind of set a lot of people off against the poem, you know, just kind of like people would say, oh, well, look, death is a natural part of life, etc, etc. But he shocks us and then invites us to take his side. So it's a really interesting way that he actually realizes that um, the audience, you know, the person he's talking to, uh, the use of the second person there is is actually revealed. We have here in the last structure point I want to actually say is the shocking, um, is several shocking descriptions versus pleasant ones, which again, keeps us off our toes. Um, so we have Excuse me, excuse me. Um, we have, you know, the food he actually used to like to eat. And then he, we have the idea of him just being filled with, you know, his mouth being filled with mud in the ground. Again, that's what he's eating now. We have the idea of like, you know, the look that he used to get him smiling. And then we've got the idea of the maggots that are now in those eyes. So again, it's just kind of all these shocking descriptions, obviously, which give us a real um, feeling about death. And obviously, I suppose, could actually remind us of our own loved ones who are dead and then thinking of them like that. And then maybe join the man in his, um, in his, um, in his disbelieving position. I don't want to say bitter because um, the bitterness isn't really what comes through, especially you don't know how long after the person has died he's written after his father's died that he's written this so obviously a lot of a lot of grief can be expected. So what does it actually get us thinking about? Well, it gets thinking about the memory of the man of his father, obviously. And obviously this portrait of him, uh, the way he actually was, you know, the simple things that he actually liked to eat, the um, uh, the, the simple things he liked to, to do in the walks, and obviously the kind of disability that he had in his life um, of the not being able to hear which of the, uh, sorry, the songs that the birds were actually singing, and then still having this great relationship with his son. Um, and also um, uh, also what he didn't like, you know, is also fear, a, a fear of death was always on his mind. And perhaps that's another thing that's actually made uh, a, a big impression impression on the on the boy you know there's a fit of he's he's got a fear of death or at least other people's death there on his mind we've got the father's personality more sorry we've got the um apologies for jumping forward we've got the horrors and fears of death the whole way through with all the descriptions again like the maggots in his eyes and then um 
you know, the fact that just the amount of death of the soaked uh, marble covered earth. Uh, so that's with gravestones there um, for Londoners to fill. And it's just basically saying ultimately that that's, you know, where everyone ends up because he's just saying, you know, oh, that's all Londoners are going to do. They're just going to fit. Ultimately, they're going to just fill in this, this bit of uh, this bit of ground. So, again, it kind of talks about the fears of death and obviously like the horrors of it in the descriptions. And this one's quite this one's an excellent contrast to this one. Um, he would have liked to have shaked people's hands, but now he's just got his finger bones sticking through finger ends you know it's just as as, as obviously his skin withers so that's really that's really yeah obviously it, when you imagine the hand going out for a handshake while it's under the grave it's it's very grim um and then the last meaning we have is obviously perhaps atheism or agnosticism or maybe losing religion because obviously we have this last stanza where he directly you know he challenges god you know you god you've treated him like this you've done all this to him you made him deaf you made him die you've got him rotting in the ground and then you say save his soul and pray and obviously it's in that um because it's in speech marks here it could be taken two ways it could be taken first of all that he's just saying it um you know he's just quoting something but also at the same time it could be like because he's adding it to a different voice with the speech marks he could be mocking it and obviously being sarcastic about it and then afterwards it says you asked me to believe and all i see is decay so basically not only decaying in terms of obviously the body and obviously people dying but he doesn't actually see any reason to to believe so in that way his belief is decayed as well and obviously that's where we get our idea of losing religion etc so the images then obviously the images are, are absolutely there's tons of them and well i really like this one of the carrera soaked covered earth uh, it reminds me of i remember actually going once to a graveyard where um there had been uh a mass movement of the graves so they'd actually taken all the graveyards from one space it was in switzerland and they'd actually piled them into one area just because they wanted to save space like um, believe it or not graveyards are a premium in switzerland and so they just thrown all the headstones on top of um on top of this one uh, patch and basically it was just it literally was it looked like um it looked like someone had just thrown matchsticks you know just all over and just like box and box of matchstitch ma sorry max <laughs> match sticks in one little area and they were all just kind of standing up and on top of each other and it was yeah it's just it's that's that that image comes straight into my head when i think of this the tons of gravestones there so um you've got the grave just above and then obviously you've got the grave down below with the maggots going in his eyes and obviously his fingers coming out of his skin so again that's really really strong uh, we've also got the image of the father's personality so you know we can kind of like he's, he's very kind of proud in, in in the best of sense someone you'd be proud of uh, obviously just in that kind of the silent walks so maybe stoic to an extent um you know he liked simple things you know he, he wasn't he wasn't um, over the top and even with this tie that he had which is discreetly loud i think that's really interesting because you know it just shows this man was full of confidence but he didn't need to show it all the time um and obviously we, the oxymoron there kind of helps us see that both these kind of characteristics were in were in were in the father and obviously like straight away the kind and old face so basically even when the boy was young his dad looked like he had an old face and that's kind of or, 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 so age is always kind of associated with with wisdom and the way people grow etc so there's a lot that you can take from the father's personality um and then uh, you could actually look at this idea of the image of nature because it is referenced quite a few times obviously with the birds and obviously in those walks and obviously the fact that he liked the um, rain washed um, Cornish air so it's kind of all these simple things just about nature you know things that are always around us and obviously like in, in that same way it's kind of point you know death is also always around us and now this um, this this person has actually become part of nature even in the most sorry horrible way by um, becoming um, you know worm food in a way and obviously it's still an image even if it's not the most pleasant one so looking at the language then we've got this um, this is what this oxymoron at the front excuse me at the top and that's really interesting because it sets us up for the oxymorons that go the whole way through you know this really pleasant feeling and then the contrast straight or sorry the contrast sets us up for with the really pleasant things and the really harsh images in the grave which we've actually um, looked at just a little earlier on when we were talking about this in structure and also it allows it we, we know we're going to have these kind of um things are going to be a little i wouldn't say disjointed but obviously things are going to change from what we expect and how, how we're going to be seeing them or things are going to have kind of two layers and that's especially true when we kind of hear all this kind of this the these ideas about the father and then this um attack or this uh, the blaming of god in this last in this last stanza um, we've also got the second person voice obviously being used here when it refers to God and again I just 
just think that's been taken as um even though he actually refers to him well it's written here with a capital g and obviously the the u especially there is written with a capital u again which denotes um obviously how god should be referred to grammatically and perhaps it's respect as well i think the fact that he's using the second person is just talking to him like anyone else so that's obviously clearly showing us that he doesn't think God is as high or mighty as or as high as mighty and deserving of belief as perhaps someone who's really religious because he actually refers to him directly he doesn't give him um a, a, the grandeur of um the grandeur of his distance in just being called God or the Lord or the one above he talks to him like you like you know literally kind of pointing him at you you're the one to blame for this so it's really important that he's actually referred to him as as you and he refers to him in that second person voice and then we've got the repetition of liked I thought that was really worth pointing out simply because it shows excuse me again just kind of what the the, the father's um the father's tastes were and it gives us a very it doesn't it's not over the top he doesn't like he loved he died for he longed for it's just you know what he actually what he actually liked and we see that here obviously when we've got the um he liked here and we've got he liked here as well so you've got the uh you've got a, a yeah a lot of feeling coming through there about about the father from from the repetition you know just you just imagine him just imagine it seems very stable um and and very loving despite his his um, disability um, and then we move on then to the effect on us well obviously it gets us thinking about death and our time and people's times and when people go and who deserves to go and who doesn't to go and why God protects people so that's where this poem even though it's really really simple in terms of the words you know the, I don't I don't think there's many things over three syllables words with many uh, sorry <laughs> I don't think there's many words over three syllables in there but it's it's amazingly amazingly wide and vast in what it can actually get us thinking about because it touches upon you know a subject that scares or actually makes everyone think um move on as well to the effect so that's obviously it's shocking you know these are kind of long lasting images that he actually mentions here it's not something that will be easily passed by and like it says it reminds us of people you know people loved ones we have or loved ones you know in the future how we might end up so it's not it's it's not the most positive um or friendly of uh, of feelings and obviously it leaves a lot of us shocked and also it asks us how will we be remembered if someone's actually uh, sorry it invites us to think about how we'll be remembered when we're looking at portraits of ourselves and how we're going to be remembered um you know what kind of elegies and poems and etc cetera, etc cetera, will people be um writing about us so there's a lot to think about in that poem but i think the overall the overall idea if you wanted if you wanted high grades on this because like it is it does seem quite simplistic in a way is you look at the 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 contradiction look at the way the poem is set up to shock us which shows the the writer's feelings and shows his his anger and resentment and obviously in that you can talk about how much he's not being able to deal with it etc but as, as i said all of those we've picked up through there but i wouldn't want you to think about you know death was the main main idea or the main main theme here because it's more to do with how he's dealing with it than than just the, the death itself